Time Warner Cable is pleased to be an underwriting sponsor for Carolina Week. Coming up on the March 7th edition of Carolina Week. You get bored sitting in your dorm room, you don't have any place to go, it's cold and stuff like that, you're like, let's get hot. <laughs> we'll give you a closer look at the use of illegal drugs on campus. At Fort Bragg, officials are balancing effective training with environmental sustainability. In sports, Carolina football players worked out in front of scouts on Tuesday. Will any of them take their acts to the pros? Everyone's favorite weathercaster, Johnny O, is here with a look at your Carolina Week four-day forecast. Plus, a man who has danced his way around the globe makes a stop here. Carolina Week starts right now. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Carolina Week. I'm Kate Schoen. And I'm Alex Villarreal. We begin tonight with a look at drug use on campus. Officials admit they don't have any way of knowing how big a problem it really is. One student we spoke with says he's continued using drugs since he got here and isn't at all worried about being caught by university officials or the police. I'm not trying to look for friends that, you know, just use drugs. I just meet people and a lot of them use drugs. <laughs> This UNC freshman, we'll call him Charlie, says he's used a number of illegal drugs. Marijuana, shrooms, barbiturates, even cocaine. Like, it sounds crazy, but like, I never really like, considered myself to have a drug problem. Like, it wasn't, I wasn't getting high like every day or something. It was more just like, you know, weekends and stuff like when you get bored or something like that. I, I, I mean, I could quit anything I wanted at any time. But coordinator of UNC's substance abuse program, Morris Godwin, says that line of thinking is what gets students in trouble. There's something definitely wrong when a person, regardless to who that person is, is willing to break the law in order to use a particular substance. It's more than just risk taking. And for UNC students, the risks are huge. UNC has its own laws about illegal drugs and its own sanctions. A student who gets caught with an illegal substance could face probation, suspension, even expulsion. For cocaine, a Schedule II drug, the lowest penalty for possession is suspension for at least one semester. For possession with the intent to sell, it's an automatic expulsion from all 16 UNC system schools. Assistant Dean of Students Jonathan Sauls oversees UNC's judicial system and says students should be more protective of their futures. Even folks who feel like they've got things pretty under control on the front end, um, depending on how those behaviors progress, um, I think there is a direct correlation between some of the students who find themselves academically ineligible and whether or not they're abusing, whether it be alcohol or drugs or any other substance. But many students, like Charlie, aren't worried. I wouldn't get caught. You got to be doing something pretty stupid to get caught by the police. I, I think that's why I continue using drugs. It's just that it never really affected me negatively. Charlie says he stopped getting high a few months ago because he wanted to focus more on school, but not because he was worried about getting caught. And if you take a look at the numbers, you can see why students like Charlie aren't too concerned. From October 1, 2005 to October 1, 2006, the Honor Court resolved just 17 drug-related cases. 15 resulted in a one to two semester probation, which means those students could remain in school, and only two cases ended with a one semester suspension. At the end of October, police arrested three business school students on drug possession charges. Students who want to live on campus next year don't have long to recontract for the fall. With Carmichael Residence Hall closing its doors, students have to find a different place to live. The housing department says renovation in Carmichael is needed to fix the current heating and cooling problems. One option for students is Morrison Residence Hall, which is currently under renovation but will reopen in the fall. Morrison will have new suites with three bedrooms and a living room. UNC freshman Dawn Sankery lives in Carmichael now but says she wants to live on South Campus next year. There's more people that live down there so you have a better community and you can visit people easier and North Campus is closer to classes and after a long day of classes you don't really want to stay in the same area. 
To secure a place on campus, send a $200 deposit along with the online housing application. The deadline for recontracting is Friday. Morrison will boast another new feature when it reopens in August. Director of the UNC Sustainability Office, Cindy Shea, says students are responsible for its introduction. At the Morrison Residence Hall, there are now solar hot water panels on the roof of the building that will produce the water for the showers that students take. And that money came largely from students themselves. Shea says North Carolina's warmer climate means more AC units in campus buildings. But solar panels aren't the only way to reduce energy output. The Rams Head Center also collects rain to water its greenery and provides a market, rec center, and dining hall all within walking distance of South Campus. Along with stormwater management and renewable energy, alternative transportation is an area of focus for the Sustainability Office. Environmental sustainability is an issue everywhere, including here on campus and at Fort Bragg. Reporter Sarah Moore says one of the largest military bases in the country is trying to minimize its environmental footprint. Fort Bragg is on the front lines of America's fight in Iraq. But this village isn't in Iraq, it's right here in North Carolina. Fort Bragg is also on the front lines of a battle that we will all fight in the 21st century, the battle for environmental sustainability. Take, for instance, Bragdad, where Fort Bragg troops are trained for actual conditions on the ground in Iraq. This village is built mostly out of recycled sea land containers used for shipping materials overseas. These containers have a limited lifespan in their original function, but can continue to be valuable for training. Fort Bragg has the rare opportunity and responsibility to test what can actually work in a diverse population. Paul Wirt says that one of their largest projects has been making Fort Bragg sustainable. They came up with the idea of a triple bottom line. So we have these sort of three competing interests, community and well-being, our mission, and the environment. And the question was, how are we going to pull all three of those together? Sustainability is doing the smart thing now so they can continue to operate in the future. The challenge of sustainability for a military base is protecting the environment while still addressing the need to protect and train their troops. One of the main goals of sustainability at Fort Bragg is to eliminate all waste by the year 2025. And people say, zero waste, you're never going to have zero waste. There's always, you know, you can't say that you're not going to throw anything away. And our position is, well, in a quarter of a century, it's entirely possible. Fort Bragg is the front runner in this environmental effort, but others are joining those efforts to keep the environment in good condition. Colonel Gregory Bean has done a great deal for environmental sustainability, but says the job is not completely done yet. Right now they all overlap to some degree and, and that center is where we're sustainable. Our goal is to make all of the circles merge so that sustainability is second nature to all of us. From Baghdad back home to Bragdad, Fort Bragg is making an effort to become more environmentally sustainable. At Fort Bragg, I'm Sarah Moore, Carolina Week. The efforts at Fort Bragg have spread beyond the base's walls. Sustainable Sand Hills, a nonprofit based on the sustainability program at Fort Bragg, operates throughout the six counties surrounding the base. From taking care of the environment to taking care of animals. After the break, we'll tell you about 15 dogs that didn't receive the treatment they deserved and why their future might be in your hands.